Thanks, Will. All right, back to the meeting minutes. All right, looks like I shared the link to the meeting minutes. So I'll go ahead and share my screen. I'm <laughs> working off just the laptop screen right now. So um, if any of y'all have any chat questions, please jump in and just mention that you're looking to have a question answered because I will not be able to see it. With that, we'll get started. All right, y'all. So I dropped the meeting minutes um, in the chat. You can grab them and follow along there. Um, and uh, at the top here are kind of some of the current specifications we're working on for folks that haven't been in this meeting before uh, and important documents that outline kind of some of the technical details for design that we're presently working on. Uh, you can go ahead and drop in and give those a read on your own time. Uh, but these are pretty important docs to kind of keep up with where we're at with the content routing work group. And then the purpose of this meeting is basically to agree on a technical implementation presently of um, double hashing is actually going to be discussed uh, at the on site presently. That's been the scope of these meetings over the last three meetings. Um, but we do have kind of aspects of double hashing and the outcomes, how that impacts the Bifrost team and the implementation and deployment of um, the versions of um, Kubo that are being deployed to the clusters by the Bifrost team that we will cover today. Uh, and then any concerns regarding future implementations of ambient content routing. So uh, we'll start off with a discussion of uh, just a handful of topics that we have here. Uh, it's not quite as voluminous as uh, it usually is, so we actually might be able to compact this meeting, um, but I'll let y'all dictate whether or not we are able to cover everything in the time that we have available. Um, since the HTTP delegated content routing discussions are going to be happening on site, uh, the primary topic that we wanted to cover today was the Bifrost implementation. Um, I think we found out somewhat over break, but kind of uh, as we ramped back up, uh, that it sounds like the um, deployment range of versions um, is a little bit different than I think possibly what we knew, or maybe people did know that, but uh, the important output outcome is that we need to kind of align on the deployment and versions and um, basically reach a unification of everything to version 17 um, with ultimately version 18 being the, the outcome goal. So um, in talking to the folks on Bifrost and uh, it looks like you're able to join, welcome Mario. If you have anything you want to uh, drop in here, please feel free to chime in. Um, but on talking with uh, the folks over on Bifrost, their plan is um, to bring everything up to version 17. Um, and then um, once they get everything to version 17 and have tested that they'd plan to then simultaneously bring everything at the same time to version 18. Mario, please jump in. Yeah, so uh, right now, everything is now on version 17. We were planning to do that before the free, before the December freeze, but you know things got in the way. So we did that at the beginning of this. We did that yesterday, I believe. So now er, er, everything is now on 017, which is good. Everything except the nitro clusters, because with all the cost cutting and the, nitro, the changes in nitro and so on, we're kind of leaving them in uh well almost minimal life support because they are basically being phased out uh but everything else the gateways preloads bootstrappers are now on 017 because we had a mess of anything between 0 to 014 016 some uh ad hoc commits in some hosts so it was a mess we said you know that let's first of all get the house in order everything is in 017 and jeff has said that he would deploy probably between today and tomorrow his time, which is PSD, uh, 018 RC2 
to a test, uh, to a set of test nodes. So that's the current status of that. Um, and one of the things that we want to do is from now on, actually uh, keep better track of uh, the latest Kubo release in production so that we actually, we do not end up again in this situation where we have like 014 deployed when 017 is the current one. Yes, Adin? Yeah, just, just a small thing. Uh, you know that there's a migration in the release, right? Which means that when you, when you test out the deployment and do the migration, if you try and roll back, that that's more complicated? Uh, no, I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, so F FYI. Um, so it's zero, is that between 17 and 18 or between? Yeah, between 17 or... and 18. Okay. The migration is a small migration. It won't take very long, but it, it just means that if you try and do the migration, it, it's, uh, yeah, it, it requires a little more effort. Um, yeah, basically, and, there's I mean, a migration between 14 and 17 somewhere in there, right? Uh, uh, no, that that migration no? was. 11, it was between 12, twelve. I think. Okay. I think it was eleven, twelve. Actually, I mean, to be complete, to be completely fair, the, well, the, first of all, that's a reason. That's a that's a reason why we are doing it on a, a test set of machines before actually deploying it everywhere. And the quote unquote nice thing about doing it in these hosts and not the nitro clusters is that. If necessary, you can just wipe everything because there is no real production data anywhere there. I mean, the gateways are just basically a cache, right? So uh, the only thing that will happen is that TTFB will suffer for a time because we wipe the whole thing. We have at some point had to wipe the whole thing. And yeah, it shouldn't be that much of a problem. Preloads might be a little bit iffy whether to do it or not. I mean, we can, might have some complaints from you, some, some, some users, but. In the end, this part of the infrastructure, the nice thing is that it's all, uh, I mean, it's all deletable without losing data. But good to know that 17 to 18, that if we need to roll back from 18 to 17, then we actually need to probably wipe. It's probably going to be easiest. Maybe. I, I think there's also an IPFS repo migrate command that if you're okay. in the new okay. version okay. to download yeah. to the old version, then then do the actual switch to the old binary. You should be OK. Yeah. OK. Thanks, Andrew, for doing that. Thanks for the heads up. Helping merge that however many moons ago. Yes, I have some familiarity <laughs> there. If anybody needs a, anything else there, I can always lend a hand. Yeah. We'd love to see that work getting uh, put to use, Andrew. <laughs> it's, uh, it's awesome. Um, that's One, really helpful, um, Mario. What can we what can we cover for you? Sorry. Oh, what what can we cover for you? I saw your hand up there. Yeah, there's a, yeah, there's a. I, I was looking at the at the previous bullet, saying something about that the hydras have been turned off. As far as I know. Part of the Hydra functionality was turned off, but part of the Hydra functionality is still there. So the Hydras are not there anymore to uh, to uh, support the DHT to you know make the DHT better, but the functionality to serve as a bridge between reframe or content or well, basically the indexers and the DHT, I think, is still there. I think something like that. There was some part that was turned off. I believe that's that was correct. I believe they yes. are still partially there, but um, yeah. if they aren't acting as real nodes where they sort of are dropping provides that get made to them silently, it would yeah. be great to transition to not need those um, once we get ambient discovery. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what will, so, well, that's something that probably, it's probably yeah. out of this, out of scope of this meeting, but yeah. Did we go beyond the um, simply severing the reporting relationship from the hydros to the DynamoDB um, since break, or is that is that the current state of the hydros? So the bridging functionality is retained. Does anyone from IPFS can y'all answer that? 
Uh, if not, I can take a, an offline confirmation. Oh, sorry. Could you ask the question again? My internet was breaking up. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, so my understanding before the break was the current state of the hydro functionality was we severed the reporting relationship between the DynamoDB and the, the hydros, but that the bridging functionality was retained. Um, did we take an additional step after break um, once we did additional testing, or is that the current state of the hydros? That, that's the current state. Okay, okay, cool. I just want to make sure something didn't happen that maybe I missed. So I, I no, but it hasn't been touched since since the break. Okay, cool, cool. So Mario, does that clarify for you at all? Kind of the the current mm -hmm. operating state. Perfect. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Um, okay. Does anybody else have any clarifications that they need of this topic regarding the Bifrost? Um, we call it maybe a remediation plan <laughs> that we're uh, undertaking for for Mario or his team at all. So, so just to be clear, the the unification of point seventeen has been a unification without reframe. Uh, I thought that we did get reframe on at least some hosts before this unification. Oh. Uh, are we, we going to add back in reframe on the seventeen hosts? What's the plan for talking to indexers? Yeah. So the um, so we did have reframe on some of the on some test nodes in zero seventeen, but. Since we were also going to be adding the uh, resource manager to the whole thing, we thought that adding resource manager plus reframe plus it was like too many changes in one go. So we decided to do the resource manager in 017 and then with 018, we will be using the HTTP delegated routing. We will, go, we will be going to, to the HTTP uh, version of, of well, reframe of what was previously known as reframe, I guess. So we will enable HTTP delegated routing on zero uh, together with the upgrade to zero team. And just to clarify for everyone on the call, is there a timeline that we can refer to Mario for that um, upgrade from V17 to V18? Uh, V18 is basically when, the, basically when the PR is merged. Uh, so Jeff will make the PR again. It will be it will be either today or tomorrow. Ah, uh, wow. Well, okay. For the just for the test for this for these test nodes. Of course, we don't we don't uh, like to publish non-released versions to the whole to to the whole swarm, right? So we will do for those test nodes. It should be done either today or tomorrow. I am assuming that Jeff bumped up against some problem last night because he said that he was going to have the PR ready by this morning for me to review, and he did not. Which I and I haven't synced with him today, so I am assuming that he bumped up against some other problem. Uh, and I really don't want to do it myself since he was already he's already working on it, and I don't want, we don't want to step on each other's toes. So I I hope that he will have the PR ready uh, today, and it will be it will be done either later today or well today evening European time, uh, during the day Pacific time, or tomorrow morning. That's good to know. Um, as far as that next step of like officially deploying to the swarm, do we actually need to know when we're going to be doing that now? will or is it sufficient i mean that... I, I so so here's the thing right like we started asking for this in october to to test it and then a month ago you said all three blanks have been deployed what fraction was that because that's how we've been trying to understand how much traffic we're getting from gateways and it sounds like we only got a fraction not all of it but we don't have a sense of like how much we got what's gone now and how much we're actually going to get when this eventually does oh. so we would like it for traffic planning purposes Okay, so one thing I mean, one thing we can do is um, I would have to check exactly because we that, that was the other thing that during November, December, we were we were running multiple experiments at the same time. So I'm not sure which one is which. In one of them, we were running it on four banks. So I'm not completely sure which one it was right now. I don't it off the top of my head. 
what we can what we can do right now is we can do it for one bank. Uh, then once we have uh, once you if you see that the traffic is fine, then we can probably increase that to two or three banks so that you can see. I mean, how we, much traffic we know that going. it was fine already on banks 11, 12, and 13 as of a month ago. Oh, okay. So it's it was three banks. Yes. Okay. But what fraction of the total thing is banks 11, 12, and 13? Oh, okay. I get it. Um, like, are we going to get another 3x? Are we going to get a 10x when we go to all of this eventually? I can tell you in a moment. Uh, feel free to talk about something else while I do, while I grab around. <laughs> sure. Thanks, Mario. That's very helpful. And thanks, Will, for clarifying. Um, so another topic, I don't know that everybody's here to talk about this, but um, is it Guillaume, Michelle? Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Please, please help me. I can't uh, hear you, friend. I have, I have one question, which I think sort of bridges between these two topics on the, the delay thing, but also this, this stuff with the, how much traffic the indexes are getting. Yeah. Um, the indexes are going to double up on traffic from gateways, right? Because they're going to get it twice, once from the hydras and then once from the... Given that the hydras are effectively an attack on the network that is anti-helpful, if you already know about CID.contact, can we just add in like a swarm filter that just denies you from dialing the Hydra range? And then you only get hit once. For the gateways? Yeah. I don't know if that's help like how helpful What about that for is. IPFS 0.18 release? Can we do it for them? And can we eventually just get rid of the hydras? No, what I'm saying is there's already a there's already a config file option for swarm filters. So like it should be like a one-line change to just do a CIDR filter for that range. If, if it turns out the extra traffic doesn't bother you, then whatever. But if it's a lot of traffic. It'll, it'll get cached, so it doesn't bother either us. I guess the it, it might be more traffic and cost that we could save on. Um, I, I guess my only worry is, are the Hydra pure IDs changing to, you know, when we restart it, such that that's like an ongoing maintenance burden? I don't, they're supposed to stay static. They should be also, stable. You can okay. do it by IP range, I think. And then the question is, do the IPs change? But it, this is like, I guess, a cost question. You'll notice once they start hitting you with everything, if this is a problem. I think that's an important topic for us to kind of keep in mind. Thanks for thanks for bringing that up, Adam. I think, um, or do you pronounce it Aiden? Uh, Adin, but Adin. Whatever, whatever works, yeah. I missed it on both, man. Sorry okay. about that. Nice to meet you. Mario, um, please jump back in. Yep. So uh, banks, uh, banks eleven, twelve, and thirteen have six hosts each, six Kubo nodes each. So eighteen Kubo nodes, and in total we have one hundred and twenty. So it's going to be between six and seven times. Or it should be between six and seven times. Uh, well, actually, one thing is. It will probably not be exactly six or seven times because we are using, on the load balancers, we are using um, consistent hashing, which means that which node, which Kubo node a request sends up at depends on the hash that is being requested at that point. So it might be that banks, that, that those banks ended up in a hot, in, in we ended up with hot CIDs or with cold, with not as hot CIDs, we don't really know, but. As a very, very rough estimate, it would be somewhere between six and seven times. That makes perfect sense. Thanks for looking into that, Mario. That's uh, helpful for our team's planning. Yep. All right. So sorry. Sorry we uh, cut you off there. Um, <laughs> but uh, we wanted to kind of discuss a topic with probe lab um we um kind of recognized I, I think we're we're hinging on kind of the same topic but there was some discussion of like potentially 20 times the reads um issue 8807 and kubo is this 
sufficiently covered, Will, through um, kind of looking at this problem with uh, Mario's feedback? Or is this a separate issue? I mean, this is, this is again, a, a planning thing. The, but right, it, it's not like a problem, but it is noting that if we get rid of the um, bit swap delay to DHTs or indexers, we're going to have a lot more reads. Um, we'd like to understand that uh, as it gets rolled out on the gateways and understand what that read load ends up looking like before we you know, release a IPFS 18 with the thing turned off. Um, Right, like that. That's the point of having the RCs and having a lot of traffic go through our own infrastructure is that we can do this a little bit more safely than putting it out into the wild and having every, you know, early query of everyone ending up hitting the indexers. Uh, I think this can be tested on clients. So if we have a experimental IPFS client, we could measure that number to see how the percentage of query that will go to the indexer or the DHT um, in addition to the current traffic. There's a bunch of like uh, other things you might run into. Like Mario, how does the consistent hashing work for the nodes? Is it based on the root CID or is it based on the full path? So it's based on the it's based on the CID. It's based on the CID. Oh, oh okay, I see what you mean. No, it's based on the full path actually. Right. So, so what path. that means is that. Say someone someone is navigating oh. through a directory. Oh, that's going to hit different nodes in the cluster, which BitSwap would yes. generally fill in the blanks. But each of those navigation nodes will now result in a new DHT and indexer request. So, like the the number here could be like really large if we're not careful in the magnification, because. BitSwap is papering over like a lot of stuff. Yes. Right. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. And uh, and actually not using the not not using just the root city, using the post default path, to me at least sounds like a bug. We should be using the we should probably be using the root CID to make the best use of the Kubo uh, of the Kubo data store. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of different ways that one one could try and one could try and optimize that. But yeah, I mean, it sort of depends yeah. on your what you're aiming at. Yeah. Is Was there? there um, I remember there was a. There was like a Thunderdome test with this turned down, with like the, the delay turned off that ended up resulting in like lower and in, in higher TTFB. I think because they're probably like CPU overload. Has this been rerun in the meanwhile? Um, as far as I know, it hasn't been rerun. But so the, the setting here will change with, with Kubo 0 0.18 because the number of connected peers would be different. So we would be interesting to run uh, this experiment again in Thunderdome with a number of like 100 connected peers instead of 800 and compare the different uh, provider search delay. So one 500 and uh, one second, for instance, to compare the performance. Also, we couldn't really explain the result we had last time, why it was worse with a zero um, delay. And yeah, maybe we'll try. We will be able to explain the result this time. So Lytle put up a PR that he was wondering if he should merge before zero eighteen about changing the changing the magic number here. Should we? I mean, I think everyone agrees that one second is probably like too much because that's like a lot of round trips. Should we maybe be more conservative in that number and then just merge it now and then we can decrease it? Once we've done the Thunderdome testing, and but such. The, the thing is, now we're going to reduce the the number of directly connected peers like by eight times, which means that the bit swap, the the success rate of bit swap discovery is expected to drop by eight times, approximately, and so it isn't acceptable anymore. So it means that in 
eight times more of the cases, we will have to wait for one full second. I don't know if that's true, both because um, you noted in that thing that there were a few like top peers that had almost all the content. Yeah. And the gateways are peered to all of those. So they're going to hit, those are, those are never getting pruned and the gateway limits are still enormous. So like are the we gateways talking are going to be about the fine. gateways or about normal Kubo clients? I mean, I guess there's both normal clients. Um, I don't remember how they get pruned. I think if you continually are downloading data, they, they won't get pruned. I don't okay. remember how their tag, I don't remember how their tags are measured with the connection manager. Um, yeah, so hopefully the block provider would remain inside the 100 connected peers. Maybe. I, it's, it's difficult because you're noticing is that we don't have like, we don't have enough metrics coming out of what is it to be a normal user? We really only have our infra peers that are giving us yeah. numbers. Okay. So for anybody that wants to kind of follow along with the state of progress on this analysis that's happening, is there anywhere other than GitHub right now where kind of these tests are being planned or communicated or should we just um, follow along in the GitHub for that? And we can use this discussion forum for people to kind of be updated on it. Does that sound right? I think it seems private. So GitHub seems reasonable. Cool. I think it's more so so from from indexing side, uh, let's we've got an ask that we'd like to have things rolled out on gateways or somewhere where we can see the impact on the indexers and track that as the load goes up um, to make sure we're going to be able to handle it before things get rolled out to release clients that we can't walk back easily. Yeah, it would be good if we could incorporate. Um... I wouldn't say like a gating function, but um, it's some kind of like testing or awareness just just so that and and maybe this meeting, the content routing work group is uh, a good way just to kind of surface when those milestones are happening so that we can prepare and plan around it. Um, I think that works for now as long as you all <laughs> intend to continue joining this group, um, we can kind of take that as as feedback but uh, so long as there's awareness that um, we kind of need to know so we can plan as well, it would be very helpful. I think we- So are we, are, 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 oh. sorry, I, I missed some of the conversation because my internet's pretty crappy, but um, are we, so we're, we're blocking the rollout on the gateways pending some of this like analysis, is that the plan or no? But roll out of what? I, I mean, 18 is fine, and and uh, okay. roll out querying indexers is fine. I think it's it's that okay. we don't want to release 18 without uh, the delay. So so this is in particular oh, on oh, the one okay. second yeah, delay. You're talking about the Let's delay. not like okay, get rid of that entirely or have it or something without having a sense of what that impact is going to be on reload. Got it. Got it. Okay. I thought this analysis you were doing was about the, the indexer integration. All right, got it, thanks. No problem, thanks for clarifying that. Uh, it, it always helps Gus, especially for people that are trying to come back afterwards and see what we, we talked about. And are we targeting to reduce the delay? if not removing totally? If it, if it gives better user performance, uh, that seems like a win, um, with the only caveat being if it generates like 100x more inner traffic and falls over the indexers, that's probably bad, but that's something we can capacity plan for. We just need to know what's gonna happen. So I would say that we can reduce it to 500 milliseconds or 400 milliseconds very safely, and it will not um, add a lot of traffic. And but the the benefit is none isn't that huge either. So yeah, doesn't change much, but it's still a progress. I would say. Are there? Uh, I mean, we just progress. Did, we uh, 
you know, we just did a lot of work to reduce costs of hydras. Uh, is there a, a cost component to this uh, in terms of like the infrastructure that needs to get run to handle these requests? Um, probably. Um, right now it's CloudFront uh, is the caching layer and that costs us money. Um, I mean, I, again, this is also sort of like a, what's the current state of the world versus where could we get to in three, six months? Um, if we manage to get caches onto, for instance, the Saturn L1s or things like that, we could manage to offload a lot of this caching um, with uh, uh, at, at lower cost. I think the, you know, we need to get the double hashing uh, type things rolled out before we are ready for that uh, and having untrusted caches. Alternatively, maybe having a different delay for um, the indexers and for the DHT could do the trick so that the indexer don't get extra load and will get like, if the request didn't result in one second with either BitSwap or the DHT, then the indexer will take this load. So the load doesn't change and the DHT doesn't need to wait um, like one full second. And this doesn't incur any cost as the hydras are now down, I guess. I'd say certainly it's it is a it's a a a bug of an interface bug that the all the routing systems are grouped together and they have the same delay penalty because each system has a different cost. Yeah. Uh, what what that should be for each system, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I think like if that's the thing that we wanted that we were like, yep, it's important to us that we change that because we want it to be a shorter delay for the indexers or a longer delay or whatever, we could, we could do that. Um, Probably we want, probably it's like if the shorter you want to make it or the more you want to eliminate the bit swap papering over things, the more you have to start fixing other stuff, whether that means plumbing sessions properly or thinking about how your infer does consistent hashing or whatever um, that will emerge as a result of this. And hopefully we have enough metrics because people have done a lot of metrics work in the last you know, uh, six months or so. Uh, but we might need more. Yep. Just because it would, I mean, it, it's good, but it would also be sad if the way that we were collecting metrics on way too many lookups was Will calling us up and being like, there's a lot of money being spent. Can you figure out why all the money went? And we're like, oh no, we need more metrics. Like that would be um, a little sad, although I guess it's a good backstop to have. M money spent is the ultimate metric. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speaking speaking of money spent, since we have so many smart people in this room, perhaps one of you can, we can uh, help me out and go offline. It turns out that the, we, I mean, we can go offline and sit and figure this out. But it turns out that our biggest spend in Equinix, our biggest line item, is outgoing bandwidth from Kubo. Uh, not our HTTP. So we would really like to know where that bandwidth is, where that data is going, what that data is. Is it bit swap? Is it just uh, publishing stuff to the DHT? Is it what it is? And if possible, uh, get it down. Can someone get together with me and perhaps give me a few pointers as to where I can look, if there are some metrics or where we could add some metrics that we could figure this out? Yeah, I, I can. I think I left some comments on that issue. If you could drop the issue, I forget where in Bifrost it is. If you could drop the link in the yeah. notes here. Um, I'll find it. But I- Yeah, there I, were some comments and then other stuff in life came by, yeah. so- Well, it was, in this, it was late December. So yeah, I, yeah. I didn't expect. I, I think some yeah. of this, I don't know how much this is going to be, you know, easy to resolve within Kubo with like more magic flags, um, but it certainly should be fixable because there's not really much utility you're getting out of egress bandwidth to everybody. Um, unless it's all coming from like legitimate bit swap wants, but um, that doesn't seem reasonable either. Yeah. 
but we'll see. We'll, we'll, we're going to, so Dennis is uh, looking at this problem and he's going to uh, talk about it this week at the probe lab offsite. Uh, Cause he found some surprising numbers when looking at the hydro data that like, a, according to that data, like a huge proportion of this was just like the P2P overhead, like connection handshakes and stuff like that. Uh, so he might have some interesting results soon on this. Okay. Because it was really, it was really surprising to find that. Awesome. I don't think we can take that topic much further, but um, I do have kind of a note here that I'll add to the action items for a follow up on this. I think that's a pretty interesting topic. A lot of folks would like to see more about. All right. <clears throat> so these are all the topics that we had planned to cover for this work group meeting number three. Um, usually at the end of the meeting for folks that haven't been here before, um, we do a round table kind of top of mind from each of the contributing teams. So it's kind of a free for all opportunity to bring up topics that you'd like discussed while you've got this audience. Um, does anybody have anything that they'd like to bring up today and see covered? All right. I have one, but that's mostly just because I've been out for a long time, which is, uh, Gus, I see there's a PR to add uh, a asynchronous responses with NDJSON um, to the delegated routing API. Um, yep. What's the, I guess what what's the time frame on on that, and is like the is like the, I guess the spec side of this are people happy with, and we're just need implementation time. I I. I remember exactly. I can't remember how much of this was in the spec or not. Um, this was basically. I think I did this over the break of just trying to like uh, like hash it out. Um, I could certainly write a spec component to it if we want to do that up front. Uh, I, mean, I think the general idea is to do the implementation first before we merge a spec. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The reason I'm asking is because I'd like to get some guy rewritten to use the yeah the that API. was the idea and then ideally we can start telling people to like if we can deploy a delegated routing endpoint that speaks the ht things and ipni things that we can maybe stop putting people towards the preload nodes as much as possible um totally yeah yeah, I, I was Just thinking specifically about some guy when I picked that up and started working on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. Thanks. Talking to these people. Oh, well. Awesome. Well, I think we've covered all of our topics here. So we can have a little bit of time back. Um, I will do the, the needful thing and go ahead and kind of aggregate the outcomes from this discussion towards the bottom of the notes here, but I'll be posting those in the content routing work group Slack afterwards. Um, so no need to follow up on this. You'll see that update um, there as well. Um, does anybody have any final questions before we drop off? All right, we got a little a little morning breakfast action in there. <laughs> Good deal. Um, well, have a great day, everybody. Um, really excited about the direction of this workshop, and thanks for everyone's participation. It's super helpful. We'll talk to y'all soon. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.